नमस्ते डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम वन सेकेंड टू वाइसली वेल वेनस्टे ना दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव बीन फॉलोइंग मी फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम वुड से हे डॉक्टर प्रिया वॉट एवर हैपन टू द वैकी वेनस्टे वेल लेट मी एक्सप्लेन लास्ट ईयर वॉज अ रियली वैकी ईयर इन द सेंस दैट इट वैक्ट अस लेफ्ट राइट एंड सेंटर टू ड्राइव सम की लेसन्स होम for our own well-being and if we have learned those lessons well this year promises to be a wise well year therefore going forward all our wednesdays are going to be wisely well wednesdays where we all together will learn share care about how to improve our wellness quotient so then a new year has started a brand new year with a brand new chapter and we are all hopeful all excited as to what is this year going to bring and what is topmost on our all our minds travel i'm sure we all want to travel but are we ready for travel in the sense is our immunity ready for travel maybe yes maybe no so let us understand what is this immunity and why should it be ready if i have to explain simply immunity is like the defense system of our body just like every country has a defense system a army a navy a air force a border security a coastal guard and the police and all other security personnel who work in a synergy to protect the country from any invasion so to our human system has its immunity the general immunity the local immunity the organ immunity the cellular immunity and various immune cells that work together in unison to protect our body from any invasion be it a virus be a bacteria be it a parasite a fungus or even a chemical therefore when a bee stings or a mosquito bites we get a little bump that is your body's way of protecting you from the venom of that bee sting or the mosquito bite so that it doesn't spread in the rest of your body similarly if a virus were to pass here i would go achi that is my body's way of expelling out the pathogen or the foreign object which is trying to enter my system without a visa i should say so that is how a vigilant immunity protects the body against all invasions in this we have a vigilant alert immunity and then we have the hyperactive immunity which is over reacting to everything what we call as allergies and an autoimmunity where the immunity our own immunity attacks ourselves kind of like a civil war or a coup well we will talk about allergies and autoimmunity are in our future wednesdays but for today let us think of how we are going to make our immunity a vigilant alert and strong immunity you see all the armies of the world are kept combat ready during peace time one of my brother is in the army the other in the navy and my son is serving ns now so i know how much rigorous training the army personnel have to get into to keep themselves combat ready during peace time so in case of an attack they are all ready to face it so too with the human system we have to keep our immunity ready at all times to face any challenges any invasion that might come our way so then how do we take care of this immunity of ours well you are what you think as the mind so the person so first think right think positive the biggest deterrent to immunity is anxiety and fear imagine if the general or the major of a army told his troops hey guys you know you are all very good but the army is way stronger you don't stand a chance do you think the soldiers would be able to fight they would have lost the war even before fighting it so too is anxiety and fear it is like we telling our immunity guys you know what you're not good 
but the virus or the bacteria or the parasite is so strong that you don't stand a chance. Your immunity will get weakened even before it gets into a combat. So therefore, please don't have anxiety, don't have fear. I don't mean to say don't be cautious. By all means, take precaution, be cautious, but don't be anxious of things which have not happened or may not happen. Don't go on this overdrive. Relax. In fact, during the lockdown, the anxiety levels were so high that I actually started group guided meditation so as to calm the systems of various people and create ripples of calmness all around. And it helped. It helped build the immunity of a lot of people. The second in line, would be nourishing yourself. Remember, I'm not using the word diet. There are all kinds of fancy diets which have mushroom. Diet for immunity, diet for this, diet for that. Diets which are drastically different than what you have eaten from childhood last for a short time and then you come back right to where you began. You need to make small sustainable changes in whatever you have been eating, such that there is a long lasting impact. So first and foremost, learn to eat regionally and seasonally. After all, Mother Nature knows what's best for us and what's best for us goes, grows in the environment around us. So no need to expend dollars in getting products far away from where you live. Like, you know, we get those blueberries which come from Oregon, US. On the other side of the globe, well, we don't need them. Yes, they might be packed with antioxidants, but we have enough fruits in our region which also are packed with antioxidants. Take our red dragon fruit. It looks beautiful. It's yummy and very, very healthy. Then, eat seasonally. Again, because it's winter and there's the flu season, Mother Nature provides us with vitamin C packed oranges. And when the heat soars in summer, Mother Nature gets out the melons to cool our heat. Isn't Mother Nature wise? Shouldn't we follow her lead? So eat enough of fruits and raw vegetables every single day. Incorporate them into a diet. I'm not saying you should just have Western kind of salads. Well, you can have the Rojak salad, which is the Southeast Asian. You can have Koshinbiri, Koshinbir, or you can have Pachari. Which way you make it is up to you, but do include salads in your diet. And yes, whenever you eat, say a prayer. Be grateful for what you eat because the very fact they are eating means you are taken care of. Third in line is exercise. The moment I say exercise, everybody goes, Yeah, Dr. Priya, I go to the gym. I do my Zumba. Well, that's good. I go for walks. Excellent. But even on an everyday basis, when you are at home, keep moving. Keep moving. Do your own chores by yourself. Just because you have helpers, don't sit around, water, tea. No, that doesn't make you move. And if you don't move, your immunity does not stay active. During lockdown, what is the key thing that happened? Well, we got locked into our homes. In offices, just walking up to the toilet is a lot of steps and add to your step count. I never check my step count, but my toilet near my clinic is way away and I have to walk there five, six times. That itself is an exercise. But when we were in lockdown, well, we were in our bedrooms and the toilets were attached. So hop, skip and jump. You're in the toilet. No, no steps, no exercise, no moving. So just like he says in Finding Nemo, keep moving people, keep moving up and down, left and right, just move. Do your simple chores at home, that's also being active, sit up, stand up, do so many things, stay active, never mind what your age, be active. Fourth in line would be, yes, as always, rest recreation and relaxation. You know why I had to see that paper? Because I am also guilty of a crime. To take rest sometimes is very difficult for me. 
as all doctors, I feel compelled to see patients. If I don't see, I feel, oh my God, am I doing this service? Well, doctors are the most overworked people. They were heroes in last year because they were helping us combat the disease. But yes, dear friends, doctors do need to rest. So do help your doctors take rest. Now on that point, even you yourself, nobody is going to come to you and say, darling, take rest. You have to learn to make time to rest. A little siesta in the afternoon is good. And of course, have a sleep routine. Be religious about your sleep routine. Do not keep on watching the phone or any other gadget up to the minute you close your eyes. You won't get a restful sleep. You don't need sleep apps to tell you that, oh, how deep have you slept? If you wake up the next morning and you feel, yeah, I'm ready to take the world, well, you know you have slept well. So, dear friends, sleeping, resting is very, very important to recharge our system, reboot our system. And recreation or relaxation does not just mean watching Netflix or any other shows for that matter or scrolling through your Facebook and other social medias, no. Relaxation, my dad used to say, is change of occupation. So do gardening. Put your hands in the soil. Touch Mother Nature's earth. It is so therapeutic. Grow little microgreens in little pots. You will grow your own vegetables at home. It's so nice. You don't need a big garden. All you need is little, little pots. And you can recycle all those little plastic containers. I don't know how they enter our homes. Yes, you can also cook. Cooking for a family is infusing love into the food that your family eats. You could paint, you could draw, you could knit, you could do so many, so many things. Here I would like to mention my aunt-in-law. She's in her 80s and during lockdown, they were all locked down. They are still in lockdown. No helpers, nobody to come in. She and uncle were all alone. Well, she did all the work of the house and in her spare time, she took little bits of paper, uh, little bits of cloth and made these lovely quilts, not for herself, but to give all her extended family. She said, I decided I will create legacies for all my grandchildren, my niece's children, my nephew's children, my daughter's children, my son's children. What a wonderful idea. What a positive outlook. Madhuri Maushi, hats off to you. And if you're listening, thank you so very much for being you. So yes, dear friends, relaxation. Doodle, do whatever it makes you happy. So relax. And then last but not the least, be socially conscious. Yes. Social consciousness is the most important thing. We are all in this together, really, literally. So if you're feeling under the weather, if you have a sniffle, if the throat is slightly irritated or the tummy is upset and you are not feeling up to it, if the temperature is just high, whether it is yours or your child's, don't take a Panadol and rush to work or don't give a Panadol to your child and send the child to school. You're not only doing disservice to yourself, your child, but to the community. If you take rest, you recover faster. But if you go to work or send your child either to the school or to the playground, you're spreading an epidemic. And before you know, epidemics turn into pandemics. Do we want any more pandemics? So let's be socially conscious. Let's take care of ourselves and our community. Sometimes, to be selfish is to be selfless. If you take care of yourself, you will take care of everybody around you, including your family. You don't need the government to tell you this, do you? Just take care of your health. That's all that I wanted to say. And like one of my kindergarten kids, kids in the sense, one of my kindergarten patients always says to me, Hey, Dr. Priya, on your mask, get set. Go! So, so long then friends. See you next Wednesday to discuss some more topic about wellness. And yes, if you have liked what we say, spread it, share it, 
subscribe to it like it and do put in your comments all the things that you would want to discuss in these wellness wednesdays we want to do something together let us together learn grow and spread the good word thank you and have a lovely day all of you